Hi, welcome to day 122. Today we're going to talk about necessary endings. Okay, do you know how much Americans spend on storage of junk? Things that they should get rid of, but they just keep hanging on to. I'm going to throw this book down. They keep hanging on to because they just don't want to part with it. They pay hundreds or even thousands of dollars a year to store stuff. I know people that say, I don't have any place to put all this stuff. My mother recently passed away and there was tons of stuff that she had collected over the years. Stuff that had no sentimental value to me. Things that she had saved, that she had kept, and we had to dispose of those things. And it was painful. What are the things that we have in our lives that we need to make end? Could it be relationships? Do we have some people in our lives that every time we're around them, even though we've had this relationship for a long time, we walk away feeling worse than what we felt like before we were with them? It could be a family member that we need to get some distance from. Now, I'm not going to divorce a family member, whether it's my father or my brother or a cousin. I will never divorce a family member because we're family. But I get to choose how much time I'm going to spend with people. The book Necessary Endings brought to light to me things that I need to stop doing. One of the things that I need to stop doing, a necessary ending, is I need to stop the evening, evening, evening meal. You know the meal that I'm talking about? Right before I go to bed, I've already had my dinner. I had dinner at 6 or 7 o'clock at night. It's 10 o'clock. I walk through the kitchen, and I am obsessed about I've got to have something to eat before I go to sleep. Although I don't need to have something to eat before I go to sleep. I already have enough calories to supply the energy I need in order to be successful the next day. How do I stop eating before I go to bed? Unnecessary calories. Are you in a job? Are you in an, a job or an environment right now that does not benefit you other than financially. Now, it could be the way that we're looking at our job. A lot of people say they want a job where they really have a passion for it. My passion is, my passion is people. I want to be around great people. When I get up in the morning, I love getting up at our home because I am surrounded by people that love me and that I love my wife and my daughters. I love being home. And I go out into the workplace because I want to make a difference in society and I want to make money in order to provide for my family. And money is a byproduct of providing value. If you're in a job, that you do not thrive at. And the reason, I think the main reason why people don't thrive in their job is because they don't like the people that they're working with. If you like the people that you're working with, if they inspire you, then you're working in the right company. If the company provides a good or service that benefits society. It doesn't matter whether you're working in a factory on an assembly line if you're surrounded by people that you enjoy working with. There's a lot of bashing about the eight to five jobs, about how you need to get rid of your eight to five jobs. I try to work an eight to five job Monday through Friday. That is my goal, to be able to work Monday through Friday, eight to five, and then spend time doing other things outside of my job. What I try to do is compress my time down to eight hours, five days a week to produce income for my family. 
That allows me, after five o'clock, to be able to spend time with my family, to be involved in my church, to be involved in civic organizations, to do something. Eight to five jobs are great. A lot of people that are on YouTube that tell you, get rid of, get rid of your eight to five job, those people work over 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Eight to five is a pretty good deal. But it's what do you do with that, that, that eight to five? How concentrated are you to becoming the best, the most successful person at your job? How much do we work on ourselves so that we can be more successful? Two people come to work. They're in the same position. One of them comes to work with the attitude of, I can't wait to get the day over so I can go home. The other one comes to work and says, I am going to do my absolute best today, and when I go home, I'm going to have a lot of energy. If you do your job as successful as you can and really work to be great at it, whether it's you're owning the business or whether you're a, a partner in the business or whether you are an employee of the business with no ownership in the business, if you do your absolute best for that company, I promise you, you will get a raise. If you don't get a raise from the company you're working for, you will get a raise from someone else. People that put their best effort into anything draw attention. And if you're the kind of person that goes the extra mile to make things happen, people want to hire you. People want to be around you. So one of my things is let's have a necessary ending. Let's have the ending of just doing the get by. Let's go the extra mile. Let's figure out what we can do to be really, really successful. What actions can we take? What books do we need to read? What people do we need to be around? What mentors do we need to have in our lives? And who can we also mentor to help them to have better lives? Thank you very much for tuning in. Subscribe down below if you're not already a, a subscriber. We send out a new video every week, just one video, not tons of content, one video. We've got all these other videos that are archived. If you go to our web or if you go to Tom Pace Mentor, you can see all the ones that we've done over the last two years. Thank you very much for watching.